scale drawings. We're going to look at how to use scale factor when it comes to measurements of length and area. What are the dimensions of the poster at one fourth its current size? You're probably looking at this thinking, uh, don't I just find one fourth of the width and one fourth of the length? Yeah, that's really it. So another way to find one fourth, if you're not sure, you know, fractions make you a little uneasy, is to just multiply by one fourth, right? So I'm gonna take the current width, which is four centimeters. I'm gonna write that as a fraction though. And I'm gonna multiply that by one fourth because that is my scale factor. So one fourth multiplied by four over one gives me one centimeter and that's my new width. My length, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna take the given length and multiply it by one fourth because that's my scale factor. I'm gonna use a little bit of cross canceling Four divided by four is one, and eight divided by four is two. So that's gonna give me two on top and a one on the bottom, which is two centimeters. So that's my new width and my new length. That's it. Let's try another one. If the poster is enlarged by a factor of seven halves, what's the new area? Okay, so we've still got a factor of something, right? Last time it was a factor of one fourth. So when you multiply by a number less than one, it's gonna get smaller, right? Not talking about negatives, just positives right now. When you multiply by a scale factor that's less than one, then the image is gonna get smaller. If you multiply by a scale factor greater than one, the image is gonna get bigger. So seven halves is the same as three and a half, right? 3.5. So it makes sense that this is an enlargement. So let's do the same thing though. Process is the same, right? So my original width was four. I'm gonna write it as a fraction because it's easier to work with two fractions if I'm multiplying. And I'm gonna multiply by the scale factor. Again, I've got some canceling I can do, right? This is divisible by two and this is divisible by two. So then on top, I end up with two times seven, which is 14. On the bottom, it's one, so I get 14 centimeters. Okay, length. I'm gonna do the same thing. My original length times my scale factor, and I'm gonna cross cancel, right? Because eight and two are both divisible by two. So divide by two and divide by two, and then multiply top times top and bottom times bottom, and that gives me 28 centimeters. But we're not done, right? Because this problem, we have to find the new area. So area is length times width. Now, you know that I don't like you just to memorize formulas and not really understand where they come from. So let me take a quick aside and explain why we do length times width. When you're finding area, what you're really doing is counting squares. You're counting to see how many unit squares fit in this rectangle. When I say unit squares, that means that the square is one unit by one unit. So in this case, if it's centimeters, that little square is one centimeter by one centimeter, and you're counting to see how many of them fit in this rectangle. Now, you could break it up into squares and count. That takes a long time, right? So let me show you, for example, if I break this up and let's say I have, it's four centimeters this way, right? So I have four squares going this way and then I have eight squares this way. And I could sit here and I could count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. But that's really cumbersome. It's a much quicker method to say, I've got four rows. I've got eight squares in each row. So four times eight is 32. Right? So the reason 
We multiply length times width is not some mystery. It's not magical. It's just a quick, efficient way to count a lot of squares in a short amount of time. That's it. All right, so let's go back to the problem. So area is length times width, but I'm gonna use my new length and width, right? So that means I'm gonna have 28 times 14. And let's see what that is. 28 times 14 is 392. And I'm not, oh, not 390C, 392. And I'm not just gonna put centimeters here, right? Because remember, area is counting squares. So 392, I'm gonna put centimeter, but I'm gonna put a little two. That means that it's a square centimeter. A square centimeter would look like this. One centimeter on this side, one centimeter on this side, right? Length and width of one centimeter each. So 392 of those little squares will fit in this rectangle once it's enlarged using a scale factor of seven halves. All right, okay. Now we've got the scale drawing of a room. What is the actual area of the room in square feet? Okay, so again, we're given an original rectangle. We have to use a scale factor to get the larger rectangle and we have to give the area. There is one extra little step in this problem though. And I wanna make sure you see it from the beginning because our measurements are given in inches. So we're gonna get enlarged measurements also in inches right but it's asking for the area in square feet anytime you're asked for a measure of area or volume and it's in a different unit than what you're given you always need to do the conversion first okay so we're going to make these dimensions larger following the scale factor then we're going to convert from inches to feet before finding the area Okay, so our conversion, our scale factor here is 50 because it says that the scale is 1 to 50. How do I get from 1 to 50? I multiply by 50. So for my width, my original width is 2, but when I multiply by 50, that gives me 100. And then how do I change 100 inches into feet? I divide by 12 because there's 12 inches in just one foot. I want to see how many times 12 goes into 100 to see how many feet there are in 100 inches. So 100 divided by 12 is 8.33333333. So I'm going to put 8.33. I'm going to round and I'm going to make this squiggly because it's not an exact answer. It's an estimate. All right, length, my original length is three inches. I'm gonna multiply by 50 to get my actual length, which is 150 inches. And how many feet is that? 150 divided by 12 is 12 and a half. So this is 12 and a half feet. This is 8.33333 feet. Now I've enlarged my dimensions and then I converted to feet. Now I'm ready to find the area. So area, like we talked about, length times width, right? So I'm going to do the matter. I can do width times length because multiplication is commutative. <laughs> so I'm going to do 12.5 times 8.33 and I get 104.125. But it does say in this problem that I'm supposed to round to the nearest integer. Think about what an integer is. An integer is a whole num includes all the whole numbers, zero, and all the opposites of the whole numbers, right? So the nearest integer here would be 104 feet, 
with a little two, right? Which means the way you say that is 104 square feet, which means 104 squares that are each one foot by one foot will fit into the area of the new enlarged room. That's it.